Start there. Okay. Do recording started. We're going to be watching some trailers from the Summer Games Fest, starting with the State of Play, which I heard was kind of meh, so we'll see what these are. Too loud. Momo. Momo. I think I was dreaming. Oh my god, that cat. <gasps> we were really transported to Mirror Land. The path of a stylist is never easy. What? What is this? So, are you ready for it? No. We're ready. Ready. God damn, dude, the animations of that cat are pretty good, though. Okay, 3D platformer. Maybe with some life sim elements? Some battling, okay. Okay, so it's an adventure life sim kind of game. It's actually kind of similar to the genres of Golden Chronicles to some extent. Pictures being taken. What the? Is it you who pursues infinity? No. Or is infinity awaiting you? I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, it looks, it looks it looks pretty cool. I don't know. I might play that. It's pretty chill. We'll see. Ballad of Antara. Let's see what this is. Stars. Stars. Shoots. I have seen the miracles you so claim. Until the towering shadows vanished into the mist. Okay. I pray for their grace. All that came were inferior shades. The voice acting's a little bit forced. Is it a soul's like? Oh my god. Booba. Mortality. These essences shall not fall into your treacherous hands. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so it looks like a soul's like. Remember, no matter what happens, we did not betray this world. What even child on your back, though? I think that's kind of unsafe. Okay, I mean, it looks, it looks nice. Age restricted, okay. Which one is this? Yes, I understand and wish to proceed. Sky Dance's Behemoth, first gameplay of VR game. <laughs> I thought I could be a hero and break the curse. Okay. But I was a fool. Was this the good? Was the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners the good? Yeah, I think it was the good one, right? There was like some mobile game or something that was really bad. There is no hope here. And the gods that walk among us thirst. Oh, he said it. The frame rate. Outsider, your head is fine. The 
poison in my veins begs me to kill. Sounds like Keanu. I'll put you in the ground. The power of our god is immeasurable. I mean, for a VR game, it looks pretty cool. Thought I could be a hero. But heroes don't survive the Forsaken Lands. Reminds me of, um, Dark Messiah. Only monsters do. You guys remember that, uh... Shit. Might and Magic, uh, Dark Messiah. Powered by the, uh, what engine was it? It was Valve's engine. It was, um, oh god, what's the name of it? What's the Valve's, what's Valve's engine? Source. Yeah, it was, it was the Might and Magic game powered by the Source engine, and so it had a lot of physics in, implemented into it. And you could do things like kicking enemies into spikes and stuff. It was pretty cool. I mean, it's okay. It's a, it's a VR game. I'm not, not going to play it, but for people who have... Oh. <laughs> I got to fix that animation a little bit. The uh... sword was coming out. Alien Rogue Incursion. It's another VR game. How many VR games? Twenty FPS. You can tell it's a. Yeah, am I the, am I weird? Where okay, you make this you make this VR game great, Alien, awesome, perfect setting for a VR game, horror game. But the, the, the shitty FPS just takes me out because it. It's like watching a slideshow at a certain point. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Okay, that was pretty much everything. I mean, that's gotta be what people are saying on, on YouTube, right? It's scary they actually decided to use this trailer with FPS this low. The number of FPS is scarier than Alien, yeah. Okay, I'm excited. Okay, Astrobots is cool. I hope this is good. Please be good. Astrobots is actually a really great franchise. So many uh, great references and Easter eggs in these games. some gameplay. Fuck yeah. These are just really great platformers. These remind me of just the Nintendo level platformers. Nathan Drake, we got some Journey references, I love it. Oh 
shit. I like the boss designs. They're pretty fun. Yeah, I like it. Looks good. Cool, cool, cool. My immersion mode actually working? Hold on, give me a second. Oh, it's not turning my webcam back on. I wonder what was going on. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, now it's fixed. Sorry about that. Still a couple kinks I gotta fix out here. Something with the, the camera hub is taking like exclusive access of the, the webcam. All right, whatever. Okay, Monster Hunter Wilds. Is this the first gameplay that we're seeing of Monster Hunter Wilds? Oh no, the English voices. As soon as we find a good spot, we can get things set up and ready to go. And then we can get started. This is gonna be great. You bet. <laughs> Dude, I can't. I, I can't. Where's... Can. <laughs> okay, we'll watch. We'll watch it for you guys, because I don't know if you guys want to watch the Japanese trailer, but... If I play this, it will certainly not be in, in English. I, I'm sorry to say. Watch the gameplay. Don't listen to the voices. Now to lead it away from the pack. We'll make for the desert. Right. Oh, that's pretty cool. A very useful mount. Oh, nice. I've selected you as a lead hunter for this expedition. Thank you, sir. A lot of gameplay. I mean, it looks really great. This looks great. The problem is I've barely played any 
of Worlds. I barely touch Worlds. I have it on PC. If we wanted to, we could play it, but there's a lot of gameplay to that. But I won't be playing it with English voices. I'll do it with like subtitles, of course, but um, there's something with the, the dubbing of Japanese games that they barely put any money into it, and the line reads are just really silly. And I think it's a problem of translating the the way that they record um, the the characters in Japan and the lay the way that the the line reads are happening in Japanese is just very different from the way that Westerners like act and talk. So they, I guess they they try to recreate and match with the style of the character acting, but in that case, then they're, oh, they're sacrificing the voice acting. And it just feels really off-putting. Okay, another age-restricted video. Oh, Silent Hill 2, okay. Oh my god, look at the, look at the ratio on this. These companies must hate money. They saw RE4 remake and said, yeah, we can do it cheaper. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. I'm ready for it. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I, I was just... It's okay. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm kind of lost. I'm looking for Silent Hill. I think you should stay away. This town, there's something wrong with it? Is it dangerous? Maybe. I'll be careful. I'm not lying. I guess I don't really care if it's dangerous or not. Lip, lip sync is kind of off. I'm going either way. No. You shouldn't be here. <laughs> it is just I'll be good, I promise. Tell him I'll be good, please. Not that recoil. No, please. Um, I mean, this feels like Bluber team, if you ask me. Bluber is in Poland, and uh, well, yeah, it, it feels like the Resident Evil Four was clearly their uh, RE two and RE four. You can tell it was, was their inspiration for a lot of the combat. But then they just did nothing of their own with it. I don't know how to put it. Yeah, they, they, I swear Angela in Silent Hills looked different. Yeah, she had a more pronounced face. It looks like she kind of went to McDonald's a few too many times. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? What did <laughs> what did they change it? Like her her eyebrows are so much thicker, her face is just more pudgy. Weird. <laughs> looks like a Life is Strange character. It looks like a Sims character. Just when I thought James's redesign is bad, then there's Angela. Holy shit. When you ask Timu for a Silent Hill remake, holy shit, dude. People are 
destroying it in the comments. Where wins me? What is this? Why is there another? There's another baby. What is it with guys carrying babies around? Oh, this is uh, Assassin's Creed Shadows. I mean, the enemy design is really cool. Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. I love it though. I mean, there needs to be more games that are inspired by Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. And the over the top kind of uh, fighting. see how it looks when we see uh, some like some unedited gameplay of that i'm curious i really like the enemy design concord okay so this is a 5v5 this is like overwatch competitor right if i'm not mistaken free gunning it's hard work problem with a lot of these overwatch kind of clones and comp competitors is that they make these really bland well you're free yeah. Right on target. Yeah, you better run. <laughs> Free gunners have a shot at making something of themselves. A chance to be someone. Right. Need a second to fix myself up. It just looks like it does nothing new. Anyone's game. You won't survive on your own. Target blinded. Finally, to battle. Endless rage. Why did you shoot the ground? We risk our lives every day to do the job. I'll clear the way. Time to show them the big guns. That's me. <laughs> That's my birthday from Predator Black Ops 6 for you. It's better than this, I would say. Take any job. Face any enemy. <laughs> this, this just looks like a, every other clone. There's nothing new. This is just... I don't know. I think it's gonna be dead on arrival. Would you like to join us for game night? Oh no. Oh no. 
trying to make their characters relatable so they can launch some big universe. <sighs> Pass. Pass. Marvelous Games Showcase. What are these? What was the Marvelous Games Showcase? Dev news? No, I'd like to actually see gameplay. Play company make a good game challenge impossible, except Treyarch. Um. Oh, Android. I I want to really want to watch Android iOS games. Path of Teal Lotus action platform. I guess we could see that. I have not seen, so I I don't know if I'm if that is there going to be like a trailer coming up. Is was there a trailer shown on Summer Games Fest for Black Ops? Oh no, is this in like is this all in Japanese? Indie game. Marvelous group. They are continuing. Serious indie title. Okay, we're gonna wait until those have uh, English trailers. Next indie direct circulation puzzle platformer. I do like my puzzle games. Reginas. What is circulation? Immerse yourself. God, I fucking hate that. I use that word, that phrase too, and I, I I need to stop using that phrase. <laughs> Rolly ball game. I like the sounds. A simple roll ball solve puzzles game. I play that probably on my own time though. But it looks nice. Reminds me of that one cool math game. Which which math game? Guerrilla Collective OTK Games Expo. Brick thing. Uh, we cannot watch all these. I'm gonna like pick and choose some of these to watch. There's no way in hell I can watch all these. Screen. I I would like to see Screenbound only because it's got a lot of it's got a lot of interest behind it, and I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. Bloxors. I feel like I've heard of that game. Dwarven Realms, some ARPG. I'll check it out. I like ARPGs. And if we see anything that looks similar to Coldern Chronicles, I'll check it out too. Good to keep up to date on that. Do to do. I think COD might be back. I'll check it out. I'm pretty interested to see if we can actually get a good COD game again. Because I think after Battlefield 1, we're not going to get a good Battlefield game for a while. Oh, there's so many games. Ground based zombies is back. What was it before? I thought it was always rounds. 
like predictable rounds, right? So you knew exactly what was going to spawn on that wave, just not necessarily where it was going to spawn. And you unlocked areas, which then allowed you to, you know, get more guns and open up secrets and shit like that. Ain't been around base since Black Ops 4? What the fuck was it then? Grit and Valor, Tactical Roguelite. Okay, that sounds interesting. Cataclysmo Strategy Sandbox? Day of the Shell Tactical. If you guys want me to watch anything too that you think I would be interested in, just mention it. If you see it here. Pinball game. Okay, I want to look that up because I actually had a pinball game idea that I thought would be pretty niche but interesting. Too many. Try to do too much. Over was Xfil. All the rest were like war zone zombies. I mean, I could see how those would be interesting, but. Yeah, you know, not the same, right? Accessibility features? Oh, it's some, like, accessibility showcase. Okay, I see. I don't really care. Okay. Civilization 7. I guess I'll look at that, because I'm curious. Star Wars Outlaws, just a teaser trailer. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Wander Stop. Narrative management game. Okay, that, that could be interesting. Oh, Outer Sloth. Actually, yeah, I, I'm going to watch this because I, I applied for Outer Sloth Game Fund with Colden Chronicles. So we can talk a bit about, a bit about that. Killer Bean? You want me to watch that? I'm gonna keep my, my camera on. Too much work turning it off. I haven't seen, I've purposely not seen like anything except Stalker 2. I have a bit of a problem with this game and I, I think the idea is neat. But I think it's going to be more interesting to play than it will be to watch. And I think that the amount of screen space that it takes up is... I don't know, I just think that this is one of those games that is like better idea on paper but may not be as enjoyable to play. And I could be wrong, these are just my feelings. A very cool experiment. But we'll see. New Assassin's I did see Assassin's Creed. Yeah, it's a cool it's a really cool concept. And it could work. I could be entirely wrong on this. But we'll see. Dwarven Realms. Let's see how the, what this looks like. A different ARPG experience, okay. Very indie.
There's, there's way too much going on on this screen. The bottom bar is okay. The bottom and top bars are okay, but like getting the loot and stuff was just. Oh, I know those. I know those assets. <laughs> There's a lot of assets that I use. I'll tell you that. <sighs> this is way too much. This is just informational number overload. Like, what the fuck is this? Pragmatic slot machine. <laughs> this is just too much. It, this is ADHD porn. Okay, this is Path of Exile inspired for sure. If, if you're gonna steal anything from Path of Exile, Arguably, it should not be its skill tree because it's it's very new player unfriendly. A different experience, man. This this just needs you need to work with like a UI designer on this, a UI and UX designer. See, wait, seasons? There are seasons in this game? Okay, All right. Greetings, commanders. I am here to brief you on your mission in grit and valor. The year is 1949. Show me the, the gameplay. War rages on okay. into the heart Alternate of universe thing, right? Table. Real-time tactics and roguelike upgrades, you must reclaim Europe, region by region. In every mission, you will control a squad of three mech units, escorting your command vehicle through waves of enemies. This is your highest priority, as it carries the EMP needed to turn the tide against you, Germany. Expect these missions to become increasingly difficult as you progress. I like the There's small map, the right uh, real-time strategy part of it. Critical. If you are daring enough, you can also complete bonus objectives to gain more permanent rewards. However, should you become overwhelmed and the reminds me a bit of like real-time strategy into the breach. In, the will end. in such circumstances, you must Which I'm, I'm cool with. to rebuild, rearm, and redeploy. You can use the supplies of earn to upgrade your mechs and promote your pilots. You can also customize your squad. Okay. They're each pilot yeah. and their ability. It's simple. It's nice and simple. Unlock your squad's potential. When ready, you must brave the front once again and push even further into the heart of enemy territory. Yes, the enemy game. territory. The United Kingdom. <laughs> it's an alternate universe. I get, I get what it's doing. Detail, Dads will love this. Yeah. Place. Once you overcome it, you must march on the we'll see how good the, the, the strategy aspect of it is and the balance. I trust you are up to the that's, that's really where a game like this either falls short or it, you know, succeeds or it fails. Cataclysmo. What is this? U.S. we do spend a lot of money. And if you want to know where a lot of that goes, for sure there's some of it that is... Uh, there's a lot of like secretive development, a lot of R and D. We have bases all around the world. We have troops all around the world. So there's China just isn't as global with its its army and forces as the U S. Like the U S has thousands and thousands of forces all around the world and bases all around the world. Unlike China, that's where a lot of the money goes. But we rose, peace. Okay, so wait, wait. So you like build up your Rose, your base, peace, <laughs> by peace, night, and defend. Night. That's pretty cool. And we survived. They broke us once. Like um. But I see no broken souls today. I see a people carved from. Real time strategy tower defense. I guess tower defense is real time strategy. We will rebuild. Uh, okay, I'd like to see more of that. That looks pretty cool. Cataclysmo. Give me a parlay for World War 3 and I'm all in on USA to win in finals. 
Um, yes. So, funny thing. The strongest air force in the world is the United States Air Force. The second strongest air force in the world is the United States Navy. Let that sink in. Yeah. If there's one thing the U.S. Uh, the U.S. is really good at, it's moving troops and infrastructure around the world. Like, the U.S. is one of the best armies in the world for logistics management. So a lot of the money goes towards that, towards maintaining a large air force that we can we can get people on the ground in any country and infrastructure on the ground in any country in a very short amount of time. Okay, so that's like some mobile turn-based strategy. Okay, it's simple. Fast-paced tactical... It said fast-paced tactical roguelike, though, so I thought it'd be a bit... Uh, a bit more fast-paced. <laughs> the, the fucking dead, yeah. There is debt. Nobody's gonna tell him to pay it. Not when you're going up against a country with nuclear possibilities. I think the U.S. realizes that. <laughs> Sexy lips, how be? Hey, Mr. Feebo. Uh, pinball Spire. Okay, so one of my favorite games, one of my, one of my super guilty pleasure games was... Uh, what was it? It was Sonic Spinball. You guys play this game? You guys ever play Sonic Spinball? Hey, remember this? I fucking love this game. I want to make a game like this. You know, like adventure pinball games, I guess you could say. For the Mr. For Runders Coffee Bo cheered X1. Can't say I'm not good to UX. Thanks, man. You love this game so much. Yeah, this game was so good. So I want to make a game like this. Uh, I think my pitch was that it would be um, Day of the Dead inspired, and you would play as a undead armadillo. So like an armadillo skeleton um, in you know Day of the Dead. Kind of theme. So, you know, kind of like these bright colors. Skulls and the flowers and shit. So imagine like Day of the Dead with a armadillo skele uh, skeleton. But it's Sonic, you know, Sonic Spinball type gameplay. Yeah, it, it, maybe maybe one day we can we can do that because it's it's a pretty easy idea, but I don't know if I could make it. It's a very art-heavy game, and it would be a lot of physics that I've never touched before, so... I, you know, it, it would be a challenge for me. That's what the art style is called. Yeah, it's like Day of the Dead. I, I'm sure there's like a proper, there's like Art Novo, I think. Which I guess is similar. Maybe that's a different style, I don't know. That's a different thing. Day of the Dead art style. Calavera. Calavera. Like Manny Calavera from... Yeah. I guess this kind of art style. I think it'd be pretty cool. It'd be, it would be a very, like, uh, flashy game. 
it, it would be instantly recognizable as you're playing a pinball game, you're an armadillo, Day of the Dead. You know, let's go crazy with the art uh, and themery like that. So, yeah, I mean, it would be a cool idea to, to look into one day. Nobody steal it. Okay, so this is kind of similar. Yeah, I'm down for it. It's pretty similar. I like it. Yeah. I think if it was Day of the Dead comically, but mixed with more of a Don't Starve or that game with the bugs and the bikes you go across the desert in. Not bikes, like hovercraft things. Yeah, it needs to be, it needs to just be like comical, I agree. How much longer are you streaming for? Also new office? Yes, new office and new apartment. And I'm streaming for maybe another couple hours. Okay, does this, does this have any gameplay or is it just a fucking Spend reveal trailer? The past, if you would define the future. It's literally just cinematic. I don't really care. There's nothing to talk about if there's no gameplay. Best right. laid plans of men. It's supposed to be the best laid plans of mice and men. Don't always come to fruition. Man proposes. I will watch it. I'll at least watch the trailer. And then boots you right in the balls. <laughs> These two young fellas, I need to find. I never finished Kingdom Come What's Deliverance. Smart ass Smith. And the others are blue-blooded fledgling. Maybe we'll do that before this game comes out. I'll actually play it on stream. How dare you speak? Gentlemen, praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father. There are many sinners in this world. Whoa. In the end, we all face your judgment for what we should have done, but lacked the courage to do. The last time I ran away, I lost everything. I'm never gonna run from that fucker again. <laughs> Everyone's reaction. So I, I will say this. I, I think War Horse Studios had a huge ambition for Kingdom Come Deliverance 1. And in a lot of ways they met it. And in a lot of ways they, they didn't meet it. But they made enough money that I'm hoping Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 can perfect what they were trying to achieve with this... Um, you know, this this simulator, I guess you could say, this this simulator game, uh, action simulator, in a way that Rockstar did with Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm hoping that that's what they can do with this. God, is this retribution for my sins? To the task! It's looking good, I'll tell you that. Come on. To the fucking task. I'd love to see more. I am eagerly awaiting to see more. <coughs> yeah. Coming 2020, do we know what, what time 2024? No, we don't yet, okay. All right, we'll see. Yeah, maybe fourth quarter. Sexual activity, fuck yeah, go. We'll see, if, if it's coming out that time, I will schedule some time to play Kingdom Come Deliverance 1. I don't know how long it takes to beat Kingdom Come Deliverance 1. Uh, not quick. That would be another that would be a couple couple weeks. I love sexual activity. I saw add sex mod and actually did it. Yeah, I'm for it. There's some DLC. 
No, well, look it up. I've never, I never finished Kingdom Come Deliverance one, and I, I kickstarted it right. So I was like, I was backing it. I, I got it on release. I played it a bit, and it, I don't know, it, it didn't really trigger for me. So I guess I'll try it again. Now that I have a bit more, I guess, like game maturity to me, and we'll see how it is. Wander stuff. Okay, this kind of looks like a similar idea to Colden Chronicles, but for like maybe a little um, an inn or something. A rest stop. Which, speaking of, if Annapurna is publishing games like this, we should reach out to them for Colden Chronicles. This is Crows. Crows goes Crows? He's making... I didn't know Crows, Crows, Crows is making. It says Ivy Road. Did they re did they rebrand? Wait, am I thinking of the right game? Yeah, did they rebrand from Crows, Crows, Crows to Ivy Road? I don't even see it on here though. So maybe it's somebody else that worked on Stanley Parable? This is from the creator of the Stanley Parable in the Beginner's Guide. Was it this guy? Oh yeah, okay, it's this guy, it's Davey, co-founding Ivy Road. Okay. Women-led games. Okay. How does that... What does that do for my games? That these are led by women. Does this make them better or something? I'm not meant to be here. I'm a fighter. I'm meant to be in the arena. In combat. But instead, I'm out here in the middle of the woods. Running a tea shop. <laughs> Male co-founder. So, what does running a tea shop involve? Well, there's a lot of gardening. And I've had to get used to the pretty unique tea machine they've got here. None of these tasks are all that hard. They just take patience. And I'm not really the patient type. I like the verticality. Surviving. Of course, I have to actually serve the tea to our customers. And once that's done, I'll usually check in with Boro, the guy who owns the shop. To see if my help is needed anywhere. And when all the chores are done, sometimes I'll just sit on a bench and do absolutely nothing. It's not fighting, but yeah, it does. Peaceful. It does give vibes. And I like the art style too. Is that I actually feel good. I'm happy. I can stop running now. I can stop. It's till your fucking I flow. I can stop. Running. This is good for me. I need to enjoy this. I feel good. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. <gasps> Trauma. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm curious. I'm very curious. Let me wish list that. I wonder what it's, if it's going to focus more on the narrative element. Narrative-centric, cozy game about change in tea. You're playing as a specific character, though, so that is a bit different compared to Colton Chronicles. I think it's more, it is more narrative-driven. There isn't, I think, as many choices here as it is a semi-linear game which is not meaning it's a bad thing right but it is definitely yeah this looks good and c418 is going to be doing the uh is doing the soundtrack for it holy shit dude this is gonna be so good c418 doing the soundtrack 
That's fucking right. Yeah. I saw that. I'm like, okay, yep. Instant. Go for gonna binge the shit out of it? Yeah, it is. Your MC isn't schizo, though. Missed opportunity. Yeah, but the player can be schizo. Because you, you can just tur you can just do whatever the fuck you want with my with my characters. I expect that it'll be more like work during the day and then story segments after hours. It could be, but there might be there might also be like story segments between. I don't know. I think it is just going to be more um, like narr the narrative is linear, but you do a little bit of exploring and planting along the way. So, uh, which I, I I like the idea of. Uh, that'd be pretty fun. I'll, I'll definitely play this. Okay, let's watch this. This is a game fund from the developers of Amogus. Uh, so I have applied for this fund with Colden Chronicles, and we'll see what happens. So we made their indie game successful, and they want to help provide some of this funding back to the community. Hi, I'm Ian from Shapeshot, and you may already be playing our first game, Mars First Logistics. We are Trinket Studios, creators of Battle Chef Brigade, and this is our card battler RPG, Battle okay, Suit Aces. We are Studio Any Percent, and we are making the Marsfield Archives a game about building and exploring connections. Hi. We're Midnight Munches. We just released a demo for One Button Bosses, our boss rush game with one a button, button bosses press and a ton of bosses to beat. Hey, I'm Husban, game director at Huscrofts, and this is Rogue Eclipse, our epic spaceflight action roguelike. It's me ever where space you have vibes. To customize and master your starfighter, take on merciless armadas, and vanquish a fleet of colossal super destroyers. And we do have one more game that's very early in development. Hi, I'm Eka, creative director of Outer Loop Games, makers of Thirsty Suitors and Falcon Age. In our new game, explore the world in an upgradable mech and cook up tasty too, yeah. dishes for local communities. Fight off corpos, discover new dosa recipes, and reunite with your strange loved ones for one last meal. Project Dosa is a game about life, death, love, and food for the soul. I like him saying what the game is about. I like that a lot. Um, so yeah, I applied, I asked for $1 million, um, seriously, to help create our vertical slice, and we would then go from there to find a publisher. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what, if they like it or not. It's going to take them some time to get back, I imagine. But yeah. I'm hopeful. One trillion. It wasn't one trillion. It was one million. Still a lot, though. Yeah, I mean, we would need one million for our for our budget. So it it would enable us to very very safely get to vertical slice and have a little bit left over if we needed a bit of period to try and find a publisher with that. So if we could get it, I mean, it would it would change my life if we could get that money. Your stream just crashed my whole browser. That's what happens. Give one billion dollars for me. How will, is this the new? Yeah, the new update. I'll, I will watch that. Skate update. There's gonna be a new skate game. There better be. Skate four. Let's fucking go. Uh, what is Power World? It's not Pokemon. Cozy Grove Camp Spirit. Spry Fox. I know Spry Fox. Hold on. Yeah, they made the... Um, I played Triple Town and Alpha Bear. They made... It was really fun. So they're making a new game. Okay, I'll take a look. <laughs> Just kidding. L to the left. You'll see. Talos Principle 2. I will want to watch this because I will play DLC for Talos Principle 2. That was a lot of fun.
Oakwood. Uh oh. I see mushrooms and simulation management strategy, and I get scared. Bookman sarcasm doesn't exist before 7 p.m. Ooh, god, there's so many games that kind of look similar to Golden Chronicles. Copycat. Heard of that one. Watch this one. God, so many cute games. Wholesome Direct. Oh, that makes sense. Moonstone Island. What do I feel like I've heard of Moonstone Island before? Okay, let's see. You'll see. Road to Elysium is a three-part coda that allows you to dive deeper into the world of the Talos Principle 2 and put your puzzle-solving skills okay. to the test. Holy oh, shit. In Orpheus Ascending, you return as 1K and enter Cerevi's mind to retrieve the shattered fragments of her personality. Set in a gorgeous environment inspired by ancient Egypt, this expansion challenges you to solve puzzles unconventionally, giving Fuck me <laughs> a second chance at life. Oh no. Step into the shoes of Yakut and visit the Isle of the Blessed. Challenge yourself with a wide variety of never before seen gonna puzzles break my using mind. familiar tools, culminating in the hexahedron, a large continuous Holy puzzle shit. cluster set in a mysterious crooked tower. Into the Abyss takes you on a journey through a dream world full of the most challenging puzzles yet, taking place on a series of floating islands and shattered dreams. Yeah, we're gonna play this, but holy shit, it's gonna break my mind. Continues the evolution of the robot world, providing you with a new perspective through a series of thought provoking. Yeah, they know how to use Unreal Engine, that's for sure. They made a beautiful game. Wow, wow, we wow. Okay. I'm definitely playing that. When is that coming? Shoot me. Oh no. It comes out in four. <laughs> Dude, I don't have time to play that. We, we will look into it when I have time to play it. From the developers of Parkitect, I kind of liked Parkitect because Parkitect was trying to be Roller Coaster Tycoon. But I don't think it was just, it wasn't as good as Roller Coaster Tycoon. But it was still good. Park Tech was still really, really fun. Maybe I should return to it, because I think I only played it when it was in early access. TC can wait till next year, right? Okay, what is this game? You know much about PCs? Yeah, I do. But d define what about PCs? Dude, I love the art style of this. Oh my god. <laughs> the sounds they make, dude, it's so... This is so... Okay, I'm playing this. There's no doubt about it. Wanna stream and play games? Okay, I'll take a look. Okay, I'm, I'm buying this. There's there's no doubt. There is it. Can I wishlist it? I'm, I'm buying that. Is this any good? Ryzen 7. Okay, it's very nice. Deep cool, liquid cooler. Uh that is a 
closed loop cooler. Let me see the motherboard. It's a pretty expensive motherboard, so it better be pretty good then. Five, three PCI 16s, three M2 slots, very nice. I wanna see it's um, connections though. E650. Show it to me. Stop it. Uh -huh. Okay, three USB 3.2 Type A's. Four of them. Or five of them. The BIOS USB 1 Type C. Pretty nice. 2 times 16 DDR5, that'll work. 2 terabytes. Uh, I would suggest getting a smaller M2, like a 250 gigabyte one for a boot drive, but it does add overhead. You, you will have to do some, some changes to your, um, not your policy management, your, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? You might have to, I don't remember the name of it because I'm spacing out right now, but you might have to change some things so that default install locations and document locations will be your D drive if you want to go that way. You can. 4080. A lot. It will certainly last you. I would certainly say anything like 3060 and above or 3070 and above is going to be great for you. Um, you can take advantage of the AV1. There should be a list of all cards that have AV1. Encoding. Although, uh, Twitch doesn't support AV1 yet, so you can still use NVE and C for that. Um, it's it's a really, really efficient type of coding, but I think only YouTube supports it right now. Uh, Twitch only supports NVE and C. Oh my god, you guys are typing stuff. Here's the thing, you're, you're going to be able to get 4K if you want in some games, but honestly, if you're going to max out, <clears throat> if you're maxing out your, your graphics in games, you're still at best probably going to get 1080p 60 if you're maxing it. Yeah, it's way more efficient than 264. But the thing is, you have dedicated encoding chips on, I think, everything from 3070 and up or 3060 and up. You have dedicated encoding chips. So it's very efficient to do that. Like, you won't be using your CPU at all for that, so you'll be fine. Uh, the mid tower case for me, mm, eight fifty watt. I would try to go with a one thousand watt personally, just because it'll it'll be a bit more um, future proof. If you start to add more uh, drives to your and peripherals. The case isn't bad. I will say personally, I hate these PSU shrouds. They're, they're kind of annoying to work with because you then have to get all of your, your cables down either through here or through a hole here. It's kind of annoying to work with. But you can do it. And you'll have three M2 slots on your motherboard, so you shouldn't need to get any physical hard disk drives are 2.5 inches unless you really want some extra storage.
yeah, I, th I think this list is pretty solid. I don't, I don't see any major issues. And because you have a closed loop cooler, you're probably not going to have any issues with clearance on your RAM. So yeah, no, this looks pretty nice. CL30 memory. Yeah, looks good. And I mean, if you run out of M2 slots as well, you can always get uh, PCIe to M2 uh, phase. This looks nice. I give it my seal of approval. Okay, Croakwood looks great though. I'm gonna have to look at Croakwood. I'm gonna have to show that to my fiance too. You will have a beefy ass PC. The only thing I would recommend, the only thing, get a 1000 watt power supply. It'll just be a bit safer for future upgrades. But it's not super necessary. I think 850 will, will be able to handle what you have. In a realm where magic is fading. What is this? The mages remain the last beacon of balance let us build a sanctuary it's an rts Traverse the lands to save and heal fantastical creatures oh, oh. it's it's more like a explore their secrets to enhance their well-being Okay. And facilitate their return to their native lands. It's definitely a strategy Unveil game. The mysteries of the world. Is it turn-based or real-time though? Toward a harmonious coexistence with magic and these fantastical beings. The fate of magic lies in our hands. Yeah, I, I can't tell. I know Goblin's published. Um, if it's like turn-based, it could be kind of like similar to like Might and Magic, which would be pretty cool. It's got a free prologue. Fantastic Haven. It, it doesn't say. You'd think that would be pretty important to say. It doesn't say. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I also want to get a full flight sim setup, so I want something that goes got big balls. Um, if you're plugging in peripherals, definitely go with a 1000 watt power supply then. You know, you're only going to use as much power as you're drawing at any point, so having the extra capacity isn't going to like up your, your power bill. And the differences in price between an 850 watt and a 1000 watt, it's going to be very minimal. <laughs> Moonstone Island is a creature collecting life sim set in an oh, open world okay. with 100 islands to explore. What do you mean 100 islands to explore? Todd Howard. Collect spirits. Make friends. and test your strength in card-based encounters to complete your alchemy training. Don't you say alchemy. <laughs> Don't you dare say it. Coming to Nintendo Switch on June 19th and available on Steam That's Raw Fury. See, this is why I need, I need to talk to Annapurna. I need to talk to Raw Fury because these... These two publishers, I feel like, would be perfect 
for Colon Chronicles. Okay, please, I just need more to do in the world. Uh, world. New Island. I like the new designs. New pals, of course. A mimic dog. Holy shit. Dedicated servers on Xbox, nice. New buildings. Subspecies. Now, I don't think there needs to be procedural generation, but there at least needs to be more to do in the maps. If you, Sean, if you download Prime 95 and some graphics benchmarking tool, you can probably max out your CPU and GPU at the same time to test power draw. Okay, is this actually going to tell us anything about a new skate game? Let me see the likes to dislikes. Okay, there's not really anything about Skate 4. God damn it. I got my hopes up. Oh, I don't know. Cozy Grove. Okay, so I know the developers of these games. True. Let's spread some kindness. True. Would you like a hug? I love it. It's only on mobile, too. They really should release stuff like this on PC. What? Available exclusively for Netflix? Me what? You have to be a Netflix member to play their game? Oh, dude, what are you doing, Netflix? God damn it. <laughs> Do you not want me to play your game? I'm not getting fucking Netflix. Um, there are so many games here, and I don't know what's what because they kind of show this tiny little image. Maybe some, somebody just tell me if there was anything good from the Latin American Games Showcase. It was kind of hard to see. Or it does look like there was some good stuff, but I don't know. Strategy Sim. Sunny side that looks like a uh, boys love kind of game. My fiance would love that. Just crow things. I like crows, so I'm going to watch the trailer for that.
Mexico 1921, a deep slump. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll watch it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Jungle Munch. Munch. I don't know. Next page. Ooh, new dredge. DLC. What is the relic? Souls like role playing action game. The operator. Yeah, that looks interesting. Deliver us home. The precinct. Goat Sim 3 Multiverse of Nonsense. Wonderful. Already released though. Mandragora. Untitled game? <laughs> Just a teaser trailer. I don't want to watch a teaser trailer. Nom Nom Cozy Forest Cafe. God, lots of cozy games coming out. Jesus Christ. Who has time to play all these games? Okay, here's Black Ops 6. It was the campaign reveal, right? And Doom Dark Ages looks... Uh, I don't know what that... Is that a new Doom game? Because if so, let's fucking go. Dragon Age Veilguard. I did not see the trailer of. State of Decay 3 is just cinematic. I'll come back to watch gameplay of that. Starfield Shattered Space. I bought the Deluxe Edition, so I'm going to get Shattered Space. I'll play it on release because, honestly, I didn't, I didn't dislike Starfield. It just wasn't memorable to me. Expedition 33, what is that? RPG action game. Uh, South of Midnight did have Sweet Baby Ink involvement, didn't it? A little scary to me. Oh shit, there's, okay, there's a lot of good stuff here. Let's, let's start with this, though. Oh shit, dude. Oh my god, flaming poop? This looks wild, dude. It's like, um, isometric crow goat simulator. Change the storage for a 2 terabyte C drive because I'm fucked in the head. You have two 2 terabytes? You want a 2 terabyte C drive? Oh my god, bro. Good, good luck, dude. What are you gonna put on your C drive for two terabytes? Eso solo puede significar una cosa. 
se jodió el plan de Agua Prieta. Una de las cosas más revolucionarias que pueden hacerse ¿Ya? es proclamar ferozmente lo que sucede. Busca a Gregorio. Ahora sí estás en la boca del lobo. Ve por esa nota. Otros Look what they're doing with the art. Abierto paso para ti para que pudieras llegar hasta aquí. Rico. Y ahora es tu turno. Yeah, I like Arso. Ooh, new Dredge DLC. Did you guys hey, play Dredge? What? I don't know if you were here last year when I did my um my uh, game of the year stream, but I gave Dredge and Dave the Diver the Goaty Awards, and twelve. Yeah, I, I fucking love Dredge. Such a good game. Oh shit. Do you have any gameplay to show yet? Uh, sadly not. Maybe it's like a whole new map too. Cause you're gonna have like a an oil rig area. Shit though, no gameplay kinda kinda sucks. Mmm, yummy. August 15th. Two to five hours of content playable at any time in your playthrough. Okay, cool. Brand new side story, new tier of equipment, eight new pieces of gear, 50 new fish. Wow. New tier of boat hole. Okay. I'll be curious to see how, uh, how expensive that is. The relic. This is a souls like. Dude, did he just Thanos snap them? frames I'll have to see more of that I, I I think I'll have to see like unedited gameplay or play some of that myself to, to really understand it looks promising what is this the operator conspiracy fueled narrative adventure that sounds like our stream. Interesting. I've seen a lot of games kind of attempt this, this computer type gameplay. I'll be curious to see how it handles it. Uh, Tales of the Shire. I don't think I saw that either, but I wanted to. Let me watch that real quick. There are many tales of Middle Earth. Yeah. Tales of courage. There are many tales of Middle Earth, and Amazon made one of them. Brave deeds in dark times. But that is not our story. 
For this is one of new beginnings. Okay. What type of game is this? Cozy Life Sim in the Shire? Private Division. With Weta Workshop, too. I have to ask, how did this game not get built before? Cozy Life Sim in the Shire? It seems like somebody should have done this 10 years ago. Go and dip to the shops, you want anything? Hey, give me some cookies. Look, man. Yeah, no worries, man. Seasons. These are our tales of the Shire. This looks so good. Yeah. Yep. People don't like it. Is it because it's not for PC? It's just Nintendo Switch, that's why. I mean, it looks really good. How is this not a thing before now, right? We had to suffer through Gollum to get this. I don't know, it, it looks really good, but I, I do wish it was for PC, because that's just, uh... That feels... Uh, I, I want to play this on PC. Okay, Mandragora. Take me forward, no matter the danger. Hi everyone, Alex here, Community Hi. Marketing Manager at Primal Game Studio. We're currently working on our most ambitious game to date. Mandragora. Mandragora is a 2.5D action RPG side-scroller with deep Metroidvania and Souls-like elements. Okay. We're currently working on fine-tuning the many features that will be available in the game, including epic boss fights and a branching talent tree. Inquisitor. Let me see the talent tree. Strength, Dexterity, Power, Spirit, Endurance, Knowledge, Constitution, Defense, and Vigor. That is a lot of attributes. And you have Bleed, Burn, Light, Brand, Poison, something else, and Weakness as status effects. That is a lot of stats. Fire, Bleed, Poison, Frost, Void, Physical, and Wield resistances. Inquisitor, got supplies for your journey upstairs. You deserve better for what you did to that witch, but it's all we've got to spare. In the full release, expect to find yourself immersed in a narrative crafted by industry legend Brian Mitsoda, known for his work on Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Meet many characters, all okay. voiced by professional voice actors, including Aisha Salim, known for her work on Overwatch, and find yourself whisked away into the world of Mandragora with a dark fantasy soundtrack composed by Christos Antonio, best known for his work as a member of Sectic Flesh. Twenty twenty four is going to be a big year for us as we work towards releasing later this, this cool. year alongside our new Good publishing partner, Knight's Peak. We look forward to bringing Mandragora to your PC and consoles. And oh, I love that! You know, utilize if you're going to do two point five D, you need to utilize the two point five D space. We look forward. And to I, I love the the suit of armor walking in from the background. To your PC and consoles, and really hope you enjoy playing. Your passenger is lost. That looks good. So is this one. This looks cool. Mandragora. I, I'm into it. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, Black Ops 6. Sean, you wanted me to look at this, right? Good evening. 
Good evening. Soviet Union is no more. Despite a potential for instability and chaos, these events clearly serve our national interest. Oh my god, dude, the Kuwait oil fires. Free from the specter of global conflict. Look at Saddam. Today we celebrate the mystery of American renewal. Something's going on. Something big. I'm a fire starter. Terrifically fire starter. I figured if I stuck around hell long enough, I'd see the devil. How's he look? So is this taking place in Kuwait? Or is there some of it in Kuwait? The agency is compromised. We're being hunted from the inside. You don't have to trust me, Marshal. But it might be better if you do. Hey! Some you should see. What the hell are we getting into? Don't trust anyone. black site are you out of your mind things got complicated who's that voice actor he sounds so recognizable god damn dude this action looks incredible if there was one if there was one franchise where i thought they wouldn't spend as much time on their single player. It would be Call of Duty. But this, I mean, it looks like they put a lot of fucking money and time into their single player campaign for Black Ops 6. I'm, I'm intrigued. This looks pretty cool. Set in the 90s? Yeah, I don't know about the timeline specifically. But it looks interesting. Will the campaign be longer than three hours? We'll see. Yeah, I need to see the gameplay, too. Yeah, we have to see more. What are they charging? They're charging 70 or 80 bucks for this shit. Yeah, I'm going to torrent that game. And uh, I am not going to apologize for that. I'm, I'm going to torrent that game. <laughs> it's just simple as that. Sorry, but that's how I say no to that kind of shit. Okay, Doom the Dark Ages. This, is this going to be... This has to be a new game, right? I fucking love Doom, by the way. I love Doom. This is the first time hearing of this. Oh my god, dude, that armor looks so badass. Let's fucking go. That's the only weapon I need is the super shotgun. A shield? Shit. 
Oh my god, dude. A mech in dragon. Okay. This looks it's getting less and less like Doom compared to 2016. I wasn't a huge fan of Eternal. I think Eternal was cool. But 2016 was better. I'm curious to see what this will play like. This looks good. <laughs> this game is going to do to my outdated CPU. True. People are complaining that the new Hellblade game is full price and only five hours long. That seems like a pretty fair complaint to me. Yeah, I, I think it's a fair complaint. I, I understand, you know, I, I would say this. I don't mind paying 60 bucks for a game if it's a six, six hours, $60, uh, $60 game, if the experience is exceptional. Like, fucking next level, six hours of you will never play a game like this. You've never played a game like this, and you will never play a game like this for, like, ten more years. This is groundbreaking. But six hours for a game that was mostly, like, cinematic... Eh. Yeah, they, they have been. Uh, the, the previous Doom games were really, really optimized. 100%. The, the id tech engine is just amazing. But personally, I think Doom 2016 was more of an actual Doom game than Eternal was. It was still good, but it felt more like you were playing... Um, what's the game? Oh god, what what is it? Uh, I can't think of the word for it. Quake. It felt like a Quake game with a Doom skin. This looks good. Doom Dark Ages looks good. I'm very excited to see more of it. The prequel. All right. Yeah, I'm in. All right. Dragon Age: The Veil Guard. I have heard. Not so great things about this trailer. Bio the name Bioware means nothing to me. Because all the people that made the good Bioware games are not working at Bioware anymore. Yeah, but Quake is just Doom in proper 3D. I mean... Doom was, I guess, less, it was less about strategy and weapon choice and more about just go in and kill things. And I think that Doom Eternal to me was all about using the right weapon for the right job. And I kind of preferred Doom 2016's approach of, dude, just play with guns, just kill things, be happy. Enjoy it. Uh, unfortunately, Mick Gordon probably isn't going to be working on the new Doom, though, right? That's going to be pretty sad. When was the last time we played OG Doom? I don't know, a few years ago I played it. I don't remember on what. Oh, no, I played it on my, on my Switch. Yeah, because I was curious how it ran. Yeah. Sadly, he's not going to be working on the new Doom. Oh, well. Rip. All right, show me this. Game engine footage. Wonderful. Not looking good, old friend. This will take more than you and me. What are you thinking? We need someone to be our eyes and ears in the shadows. And someone to bring a little darkness to the daylight. This. We're going into the fade, aren't we? Digging up a lot of buried secrets. What about Darkspawn? 
Yeah. Someone who will stand between us and a pack of demons. <sighs> what's the what's the EA like? Hold on, I need to see something because this this is giving me the vibes of something from EA. Yeah, it's giving me like Apex Legends. Like, where's the story? Right. We'll need someone with fire in their blood. One more thing. This crew needs a leader. Someone we can count on. Someone that the world can count on. Yeah, I'm getting a bad feeling with this. But where are There's no gameplay yet either, so I don't even know how to feel about the game. Together? This feels like it just feels like Apex. <laughs> I don't know, it feels like I'm watching a Marvel intro or something. Doesn't, this doesn't feel like oh my god dude the, the ratio this doesn't feel like uh like dragon age at all yeah dark it, you, it was dark fantasy with dark humor and yes yeah, saturday morning cartoons i couldn't have said it better how do we go from dark fantasy to saturday morning cartoons looks adequately designed for a modern audience it just feels so soulless Gameplay trailer on your birthday. Oh, tomorrow. Okay. Well, I guess we'll watch the gameplay. This feels even less serious than Inquisition. Dragon Suicide Squad. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I judge Dragon H2 too harshly. I don't know. I mean... You had... I remember this trailer. Oh, dude. Claudia Black. What, what a legendary voice actress. Playing one of gaming's most legendary characters. I don't know, it's just... It, sure, it's a fantasy world. But this just feels more serious to me. This new Dragon Age is multiplayer only. I don't think it's going to be multiplayer only. But I wouldn't be surprised if it has multiplayer elements. A lot of big publishers have to do that because it's the only way they can justify such large budgets. And it might be that you are able to play compan the companions with other people. I don't know. This is way more serious and gritty. <laughs> he just, he just <laughs> gibbed it, dude. Little gibbs. Fuck yeah, Morgan. Dragon Age 1 and 2 were pretty dark. I think Dragon Age Inquisition was... It was... I would say this, at the very least, it was more serious. Dragon Age 1 and 2 were more dark than Inquisition, but all three of them were rather serious in their plots. 
they could still be comedic. I mean, Morgan and um, Alistair dialogue is just legendary. But they were still serious games when it came to things. I don't know. Here, who is here after watching the dreadful Veilguard trailer? Yeah, this, I don't know, this trailer just did, looks really... Either die as Dragon Age or live long enough to see yourself become Fortnite. Baldur's Gate 3 looks more like Dragon Age than Dragon Age itself. These are very valid. Well, it was certainly darker than this. These just feel like these do feel like Fortnite character intros. I mean, whatever word you want to use, this does not feel like the original Dragon Age at all. All right, Shattered Space, show me why I spent so much money on the Deluxe Edition Starfield. Please give me something worth my money. You're currently making a very Saturday morning cartoon? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, we'll see what the gameplay is. I'll watch the gameplay tomorrow if it's out while we're streaming. some horror vibes? I'm into that. Nice location. And choose your words carefully. They will determine how long you live. You trespass in the home of House Varun. Your fate will be decided. Oh, we're gonna be exploring some House Varun stuff. Okay. Can you feel its embrace encircling your heart? Constricting until there is no more you. Only us. This is Star Citizen. <laughs> I don't know what to expect from this yet. What I can see is House Varun horror vibes will be great for DLC. I'm just curious how it plays, what the story's like. Can they save Starfield enough to warrant making Starfield 2? I'd be open to that. New content coming tonight. We have a proposal for you. New locations, new gear. New bounties. Just give us the modding support, please. I'm not I'm not spending real money. Okay. Okay, I Oh wait, so the create the creation kit is available. The modding support is available. Like proper modding support. Thank the Lord it's finally here. I'll play that. I'll play Shattered Space. Like I said, I didn't hate Starfield. I just didn't think it was very memorable. And it sacrificed a lot of the things that I think made Bethesda games very enjoyable. So I'll play it. We'll see if it's better. And I don't know. That's all I can say. Expedition 33. Product not yet rated. Okay. Soon, 
soon she'll wake and paint again. Paint a new number, ticking down every year. One stroke, and everyone of that age vanishes into nothingness. Every year she paints again, and every year an expedition departs for the continent with one hopeless mission. Destroy the Paintress so she can never paint death again. It's a cool premise. We'll break the cycle so she can't steal anyone else's future. This world is full of wonders. Yet everywhere we go, we walk with death. Yeah, no old people. We're the only ones left. Very cinematic turn-based strategy, or turn-based, uh, well, yeah, turn-based gameplay. But not entire. Okay, so it's. So you have some control, though. Okay. Even if we fail, we lay the trail for those who will come after. Right? We are Expedition 33. I, I'm intrigued. I, I think this is either going to be mediocre or very good. Uh, I've got a good feeling about this one. I've got a really good feeling about this one. Yeah, high budget turn base. I, it looks great. I love the the premise. It looks really cool. The gameplay looks really awesome. I'm just counting down. Or are they random? I think they're counting down. So she she keeps killing the older and older generation. Assumedly until there's nobody left. But you know, at a certain point, of course, you can only really do things as an adult. So they're kind of like, well, anybody over. 20 years old is or anybody under 20 years old is gonna have a hard time killing the paintress so we need to keep sending these expeditions in the hopes that something can actually get done that's what i'm assuming from what it says okay let me go find the let me go to the toilet real quick and then we'll come back and finish up some of the, the rest of this and we might have to watch some more of this tomorrow. I'll at least get through like Xbox Games Showcase today if I can. But give me one second. Be your beat.
Oh, sorry, I really had to pee. And when you're born, you can turn 33 before she paints 32. Yeah, I was wondering that too. Like, when, when does that get applied? Is it applied like, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll see more when it, when, when they, when they show more about it. But I, I like the general premise. So, yeah. Um, is this a new Metal Gear Solid game? I, I don't know too much about Metal Gear Solid Universe. I don't know if this is a new game or. If this is a remake or something, I don't fucking know. Right, but I don't know. You know I really don't want a five v five hero shooter. I'm so fucking tired of those games. Winterboro, just an announcement. Gameplay. Dark. Where have I heard of Perfect Dark before? Yeah, it came out in 2000. Okay, so it's a remake. Oh, cool. Mecha Break. Mecha Game? Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. Yeah, I was like, I, I know this before. I kind of wish they would put like a remake or something on there just so I know. Oh, a new Indiana Jones game. I can't remember if that looked good or not. I'll watch it. That bowed. Oh yeah, I'm sitting. Okay, okay, okay. Let me watch that. Adam Fall, first person shooter action hack and slash. Then we'll watch the Assassin's Creed Shadows. And we'll catch up on some of the PC gaming stuff. Uh, Ale Abbey. Yeah, we'll watch that stuff like that tomorrow if we have some time. Because there's a lot of PC gaming show stuff. Okay, colors. I feel like that's the least necessary aspect of this trailer, but... The PvP? I want to see destruction and explosions if I'm playing a mech game. Okay, it is PvP. I don't mind it. But it feels like a missed opportunity when you're making a mech game. Why would you not go with like Battlefield's Levolution system, right? You guys remember that from like Battlefield? Especially Battlefield 4 had some great Levolution. I feel like if you're doing a mech game, you know, give me some giant ass destruction. Evolution is the next step in player choice and how you affect the world and the world affects you back. Dude, so right. It can be anything, like creating all new paths to get the upper hand in the fight. Raise bollards to stop vehicles. Fortify your position. Red faction, red faction of good ones too. Or how about trapping your enemy with one of your hang grenades? Metal detectors will give you precision away. 
I think Battlefield 4 had really good level evolution as well. Disorient your enemies by using the environment to gain a tactical advantage. Then there's the ambient changes that will drastically alter the look and feel of the map during the course of the battle. Finally, you can trigger massive game-changing events. You can flood an entire city, changing the tide of the battle. Evolution is a game changer. It's a big focus for us as we take the dynamics of Battlefield to a whole new level. It was some cool stuff. I think it was a really good part of Battlefield. Okay, Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. Rated M for Mature. Better be. Why would I do anything for you, Fox? If it's vengeance you want, I'll give it to you. If the combat plays as fluid as it looks, it could be pretty cool. God, the, the triangles kind of give me Forspoken vibes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about you, but Forspoken had like a lot of triangle imagery. Indy used to have guns, yeah. I mean, with homebrew, you can do anything. Okay, I mean, I'd like to see like a some gameplay. It looks, I don't know why it's getting such slow. I don't know why people are like giving this down votes. It's pretty, it looks pretty okay. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. I'm a, I'm a bit nervous about this one. I'm tentative. Are you sure you want to investigate these Hindi? I can't let this go. It could be the best kept secret in history. What are you going to do, Indiana? These artifacts have a deep connection to something in the past. Boss believes they hold a kind of power. A discovery that could change the world. What were you doing out there? Fresh air! <sighs> we have to find the stones, Gina. Or they will. If you were to draw a line through these ancient sites around the globe, you'd get a perfectly aligned circle. The Great Circle. Exactly. I intercepted a Morse code coming from the Himalayas. Where Voss is sending all of his men. Is that a... Battleship? I just need to see the gameplay, you know? It's like, okay, you've Get sold me in the look. cinematics. The set pieces, they look great. Stone. Get off this ship. That in his hands. What does it say? Earth something. Huh. What was that? We'd better hide. The voice actors does a pretty good job too.
And that's the thing is like this is all a cutscene. Cool, great. Where's the stone, you American rat? What stone? Have you ever heard of Höhenangst? Fear of heights? Yes! <laughs> I have it. I endured this dreadful mountain even if my mind was screaming every step of the way. Because of a concept, you narrow-minded Americans will never understand! <laughs> devotion. Total and absolute devotion to the fatherland. You have no purpose. What you have is your stupid American cartoons. Choo choo! Choo choo! <laughs> you laugh and dance, celebrating your own idiocy and drinking the piss you call beer! I will walk through fire for the devoted man. Feels like it was written by millennials. Give me that stone. No! I can't give you what I don't have. I shall search your corpse to make sure I. Place away. Give me the stone. Gina. Yeah, it might be more like Tomb Raider. This might be one of those games that you watch on YouTube, like Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, the movie, and it's just the the, the cinematics with all the gameplay cut out. Oh fuck! I mean, I think I'll watch somebody play it because I don't know. It just play it day one. Maybe even I'm crazy. But where the fuck is the the good gameplay? Oh, it's Troy Baker playing as Indy. Okay. Uh. One. Yeah, get... console, PC, cloud. So it is gonna be a PC. I don't know, I mean, cinematically, sure, the game is not bad, but it, the gameplay looks very... It, it, there was barely any of it, and what was there kind of looks really half-baked, the combat. So, I don't know. I think I'll just watch somebody play it, unless I see more gameplay that looks promising to me. I don't know. What is this game? You never know you are a monster until someone comes to slay you. The first signs are So if I slay pussy, does that mean that all women are monsters? Oh. They settle. But over time, it becomes clear. The gift changes you. 
slowly consuming every little part of your humanity. And Asian games just have next level monster design. jokes. I should know. It runs in my blood. Oh, kind of hot. I mean, uh, okay. I'm starting to get a little tired of like souls like there's there's a fuck ton of them and especially you know Asian fantasy souls likes like East Asia I don't know I guess we'll just we'll see that's all I can say Calm. your emperor has chosen you as our envoy to the living lands that wild frontier suffers from the dream scourge. Find the root of this terrible plague and put an end to it. He is wrong. The dream scourge is but a symptom of a deeper, more dangerous rot. Her voice is nice. Go tame the chaos that plagues the living lands so that those who remain standing can shape its future. They both deceive you. There is more wonder in this world than eyes alone can see. You must open yourself to its mysteries. Tend to its purpose, no matter how wild. And become what the living lands truly needs. Its protector. Don't see destiny. God damn it, forge your. God, I... Okay, I mean, game looks fine. I, I, I've, I've known of, of avowed for a while, but there's certain phrases in in games and in game marketing that I just I'm tired of hearing. Forge your destiny is one of them. I fucking hate it. Stop using it. <laughs> it's it's so overused. I I can't. Okay, what is Adam Fall? Product not yet rated. I like difficult games, but only some difficult games, not all of them. Maybe that's why I liked Elden Ring, is because Elden Ring for me wasn't actually difficult. Elden Ring was like a good sweet spot between difficult and very easy to break. Because pretty much any way you play that game, you, there's some way to break it. I'm curious. I want to see more gameplay. This is a Fallout London mod. Rip. Rip Fallout London. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd like to see more of this. 
Uh, it's too early for me to really make any judgments. Oh, is it really their old um, British Atomic Heart? Really their own, their own engine? Pretty cool. Oh boy. Okay, Assassin's Creed Shadows. That, my biggest problem is I'm going to hear English, and I can't, I can't, I can't. Ever tell you why my bones ache in the weather? War. Their soldiers killed everyone. I do not fear our enemy. They talk of peace and dream of war. <laughs> People deserve to be freed of the oppressor's grasp. Vengeance is on lonely paths now, eh? Believe me, there are other ways to heal. People so quick to abuse their power do not deserve to keep it. There is much we will learn from each other, Yasuke. You can see when two people fit, when they will be better together. There is no honor in praying on the weak. Together, we will bring justice back to the people. Yeah. I'd rather just play Ghost of Tsushima, to be honest. Like, Ghost of Tsushima is a much better... And... I don't mind historical fiction. I don't have any problem with historical fiction of Yasuke, right? There's no real evidence that he was ever that interesting of a person in history, but it's historical fiction. You can do whatever the fuck you want. But just as a game... I don't know. The, the, the way that Assassin's Creed is going, I, I'm not really a fan of it. I just think I'd rather go play Ghost of, Tsush Ghost of Tsushima. That with the, with the Japanese voices is really, really good. And has some great battles. Gatekeepy? Why is it gatekeepy? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this game. I just think that Assassin's Creed games, I don't know, they they don't really feel that great anymore. They used to. The Souls like? It's not really. I mean, if you play it on the hardest difficulty, it, it's quite difficult, but it's more lethal than a Souls like game. Souls like games, you have a lot of like bullet sponges. And with Ghost of Tsushima, it's a lot more lethal. I just, I just know that Assassin's Creed Shadow, you're going to have some bird or something that can go up into the sky and highlight the targets for you, and I, I can't stand that. It just, I don't know what, what this will do for me that Ghost of Tsushima didn't already do better and more interesting because it based it on real-world events and battles the care the voice acting was great uh, you know the japanese voice actors were exceptional i don't know it, it just kind of feels like sucker punch got to the got to them first watch the entire pc game show it was definitely a game show We'll watch some of this tomorrow because I'm I'm kind of curious about some of the some of the indie games. We'll see.
Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing that makes me want to play Assassin's Creed Shadows. Uh, let's put it that way. I don't really... Holy shit, that's really loud. I'm not really a fan of the whole discourse about Yasuke. It's like, it's, it's historical fiction. That's not really the problem for me. But I, I want to see the, the gameplay and how the open world is handled. Because for me, that's going to change actually how it's going to be... How it's, how it's going to play day to day. Ubisoft, why isn't your trailer in 4K? Yeah, Unity Parkour would be pretty cool, but we'll see. Why does a Japan set game have Chinese music? It kind of does. I don't know, we'll see. It's just about Death Sprint and Frag Punk, though. Those two seem cool. Don't uh, let me forget to check those out tomorrow, then. All right, let's get some, some Stalker 2 in here. I'm a big fan of Stalker. I fucking love these games. I have played them multiple times. I'm very excited for this. I don't know about you guys. We can bump it up to 1440. Give us a better bitrate. I want a creepy ass atmospheric world where I can find anomalies. <laughs> Чарівний край черемоша і прута. Ти моя любов, ти рідна матінко моя. Жива. Координати загинув. Поквапся. I want to take a look more at like some of the Oh my god, do the map. It's perfect. It is just like old school stalker map. I fucking love it. Expecting something as good as Tarkov sound design. Yeah, but Tarkov is like, it's multiplayer, right? Oh, the weapon sounds? Okay, I'll listen to it. At least that's easy to mod, right? So. Yeah, it's kind of generic. What's up, August? This is Stalker 2. Legendary series. It feels so good. It feels like they they really capture what made Call of Duty and Shadow of Chernobyl so well remembered. Zona такая, кое бачишь и ты. Я ж показав тобі, якою я її бачу. Іди своїм шляхом. Тоді ти зможеш побачити зону по-своєму. О, oh, dude, I'm so excited. We're gonna play that on release too. There's no doubt about it. 
Thank God not many people are bitching about the fucking graphics. I know that was a complaint from like the first trailer. Yeah, the old controller and Psy voices. It's so good. No, it looks great. Yeah, this is exactly what you would get from original Stalker games. Just hopefully not uh, not as buggy and old. <laughs> like it was, it was all about the vibe, the atmosphere, the horror, action, gameplay. I mean, that's really what made these games so good. So, bringing that back, I'm all for it. Especially Shadow of Chernobyl. Hey, Crossroads. Mm, I love it. Yeah, this looks good. All right, so somebody tell me, is this a new... Is, is Metal Gear Solid Delta a new Metal Gear game? Oh, it's a remake of 3. Okay. All right. That answers that. I have a couple of friends who are Metal Gear huge fans, die hard. It's not me. Feet. Approaching Soviet airspace. Listen up, Jack. Your mission is to infiltrate Selino Yask in the Soviet mountains, ensure the safety of Sokolov, and bring him back to the West. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. The clock is ticking. This will be a sneaking mission. You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox unit special. In other words, weapons and equipment to procure on site. <laughs> that goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. I have to find my own weapons and equipment? Whose crazy idea was this anyway? The mission rests entirely in your hands. The real one-man army. Speak. Remake looks all right. But fuck Konami. a pretty good remake. I mean, when you compare that Metal Gear Solid 3 looks like, uh... Looked like this originally, right? <laughs> I'd, I'd say we have an upgrade. Look, I haven't, I haven't played 3 since I was a kid. Little babby. I think you mentioned that Fragpunk looks... I'll check out... Fra well, Fragpunk was the 5v5. You are much more of a... multiplayer fan than me. I'll check out the new, fa the new Fable trailer, and um, then I gotta get going. I gotta get going to the store. Okay, play it. Let's see. Oh, right. Jew. So, you want to know all about heroes, do you? I'm very hesitant well, about the new fable. You have come to the right place. Because, uh, who better to tell you all about them than... <laughs> as soon as they show up. Hero of them all. been for seven hours. Yeah. I'll be on tomorrow. In all his finery. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> He's just made me look at her face. 
I mean, sure, you get oh, your dude, oh, God, the, the city, though. Oh, I love it. It looks good. If it's actually that level of quality, because this is a cinematic trailer. I mean, sure, you get your mega fans. You are, like, literally my favorite person. You haters. It's like a fan club, but we hate you. Your uh, chances and uh, the occasional giant toad. The discourse around her face is that she looks ugly. And I think that arguably it's mainly a problem at certain angles, but everybody looks bad at certain angles. I don't know. It's, it's not as bad as I think people make it out to be. We hate you. Your uh, chances and uh, the occasional... Giant. I mean, we can always just say that it's, you know, it's, it's British. So, you know, what did you expect, right? Oh. For some reason. But it's more than that. About I'm just clowning on my British friends. You make. I'm a hero. I should do what I want. You thought you could save her. You know, it's your life and death stuff. That's what defines you, isn't it? Really, uh, stays with you. I knew this one hero. I took her in when she had nowhere else to go. Welcome to the most exclusive... Did they ever play the original fit? I don't think so. I really don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. Most of her gift. But you know what it's like when you're young and you have a point to prove. I tell you, this kid, she had it all. The skill, the talent, the power. Okay, well, you just fucked up your hands. Congratulations. <laughs> You've just lost your fingers. Talent. Dude, there's, there's no way that you would be able to get enough grip to swing it like that without absolutely slicing the fuck out of your fingers. There's no way. Most of the weight is in the hilt. And the moment you swing it, it's going to go flying out of your hands and you're going to lose your fingers. Nah, dude, there's no way that you, you're going to grab it like that and get enough grip without slicing the, the shit out of your fingers. I mean, maybe it's a prop. But I mean, she swings that like a bat. The power. She was something else, all right. She was... Terrifying. So, yeah, I knew this girl once who made all the wrong choices. Humphrey. She's back. I need to see gameplay, honestly. It's just, it's more like cinematic. I'm going to fix it, this place. And no one is going to stand in my way. Yeah, but have you seen that like serrated edges can do more damage than a sh completely sharp blade? There's no way that swinging, that grabbing it by the blade and swinging it like a bat is not going to do some damage to your hands that you couldn't have just prevented by not swinging it like that in the first place. What the fuck was that? Like, she had the guy on the ground. I don't know how this is defensible. What the fuck was it? Oh, here it was. The talent. Like, she knocks the guy on the ground. The talent. And then spins around. Like, why, why didn't she just keep it in her hand and swing with it? You could have, like, cut his head off. Nah, 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 I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. There's no way. Talent. There's no way that, it, okay, she trips him, she uses her, her weight to spin around, I can believe that. But why would you grab the blade instead of just holding it in your hand and slicing? There's no amount of defense in the world, there's no amount of mental gymnastics that you can do to make him believe that that was an efficient use of your weapon. Efficient and safe. She didn't even need to switch hands. Look, she has it in her right hand. She uses her weight 
to kick the guy down, okay? Look, that's fine. That part is fine. Kicks him down, wants to spin. Just keep it in your hand. Swing around and slice. And if you, if you want, don't want to do lethal damage, then just smack him with this, the side of your, uh, the bottom of your, your hilt. How much do you know about actual sword fighting? Because you, there's no amount of mental gymnastics that you, that you can make to, to justify this. There's none. There's zero. Like, you, you, have, you have uncovered a new Special Olympics sport, mental gymnastics, and this is the premier, the, the premier uh, event. Is saying that somehow grabbing the blade... Is, is exactly what needed to be done here. Instead of just keeping it in the hand that you have and slicing. So no, I don't think you know more than me about sword fighting if you think that that's okay. That, that's just cinematic bullshit. And she grabs it with both hands. Um. <laughs> this, is so, this is so dumb. Oops. Flowing off, sliced hands. Dumbest move in history. Please tell me somebody else saw this. Where's the timestamps at 150? I cannot be the only one. Gameplay, please, yeah, right. Looking forward to the studio closing. Jesus Christ. Oh my god, people complaining about the character. No way. <laughs> no, this is the this is the only right opinion to have. Of all the opinions to have in 2024, this is the only correct one. Like following your weight, fine. I don't know why this guy isn't swinging to be honest. Like she's standing right there. Knocks him to the ground. Fine, fair. But why would you do it? She's not even wearing gloves. Explain why you would do it. Whether her sword is sharp or not doesn't change the fact that there's no way you're going to be able to grip it with no gloves and actually get a handle on that in order to swing it when you could have just swung it in your right hand in the first place. There's no argument for this. <laughs> There's no argument for this. I have friends that actually do fencing and sword fighting. Like there's whole events here in Poland and in Eastern Europe for mock sword fights. Nobody's going to be doing this. So no, this is not a thing. This is not something that you would just do when you had the sword in the right hand to swing and finish this guy. I don't think you know what you're talking about, Death Throne. I mean, if you want to do something cinematic and cool, go for it. It, it looks nice if you don't think about it. But if you use your brain, uh, this, is the, this is the wrong thing to do. Hello. <laughs> this is so, it's so dumb. Bye bye, bye bye, fingers. Okay, I'm gonna get going. I gotta get going to the store. I think it's actually not raining out right now. Ooh, yeah, it's not raining, so I gotta get going because it has been raining all day. Oh, yes, hi, IKEA. I know. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm going to get going. I'll see you tomorrow for more uh, Colton Chronicles, and we're going to be keeping to work on our... I'm going to pretend the sword isn't sharp. I mean, but even then, it's like, how would you get a grip on that and swing it like a, a baseball bat? It would have to be really, really, really blunt in order to do that. Deceive your opponents. That's fair. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Have a nice day. Ciao.